story. Mm -hmm. Hello everybody and welcome to Hashtag Active for Life, our exciting physical education show where we get to get a better understanding of the types of activities you can do in order to stay healthy and active. I'm your host, Norman Mpake, and together we're going to learn about the importance of physical education, but most importantly, we're going to have fun. We're going to talk about some basic ideas on the subject of physical education, and together with LabDub, we're going to have you do some activities with us. But before that, I just wanted us to go through some of the ideas that we spoke about in the previous episodes so that you can have a better understanding of these ideas and so that you are able to see how they link to the types of things that you're going to do during your physical education lesson so that you have a better understanding of all these things. So we spoke about improving your health-related and your skill-related fitness skills. We went into the definitions of each of these and remember in the components of health-related fitness, we spoke about cardio respiratory or cardiovascular endurance, which is about your, your, your body's ability to carry oxygen and allow you to do activities for a longer period. So when you're running around and you're starting to feel that you're breathing heavier, it's because your body is trying to bring in more oxygen so that it allows you to be able to do the activity and endure the activity so you can cope with the load so you can play for longer. So that's where the cardiorespiratory or cardiovascular uh, endurance comes in, the, where your heart and your lungs are be able to, to work together and pump all this oxygen through your body. Now we move to muscular strength. We spoke about muscular strength, and, and that's about your ability to carry heavy things. So you've carried heavy things. You've carried um, your bag. You've carried balls. You've carried bags. And you've helped a teacher to carry these things when you're about to do your activities. So it's about your strength, your ability to carry those heavy forces, um, and those heavy weights. And that links to muscular endurance because you, when you are able to improve your muscular strength, you are able to endure this, the, the weight, so you are able to carry it for longer and able to do these things and repeat these, uh, carrying these heavy weights or doing these, um, uh, these exercises that allow you to uh, endure the strain on your body. Flexibility is a very exciting and important one where you really need to stretch as much as you can um, to remain flexible, to allow your body to move in, in its full range of motion or your ability to move your joints uh, completely the way they are designed to move so that you can enjoy your movements and uh, it limits the amount of injuries that you can have. Body composition, it's about the different body types, it's linked to nutrition, is that the type of food you eat and how you use that energy, but that you're sometimes born with a different body type to another person. We're all born different, we all look different, but that each one of us needs to understand how your body is made up, your organs, your bones, your, your, the amount of fat you have in your body, the amount of muscles you have, the amount of water in your body. Those are things that make up your body composition. So just not only knowing to name the body parts, being able to identify um, what it means to you. And then we moved over to see how the, the health-related fitness components link with the components of skill-related fitness. We spoke about agility and the ability to change direction quickly. And, and, and remember those words, changing direction quickly. So we spoke about in the language of physical education about direction, about where you need to be aware of your space around you. So spatial awareness and agility then starts playing and speed comes into that conversation, but we'll get to that just now. And balance. Balance is, again, another exciting um, skill-related uh, component where you need to be able to uh, balance your body and coordinate it and be able to shift your body weight from one body part to the other. But you know about balance. You've stood on one leg and being able to balance. You've been able to balance things in your hands. You've been able to balance things on your body, or on your head. So balance is a, a, an important component that you need to be able to develop as, as, you, as you go through physical activity. Speed, it's about the amount of time it takes you to do in a particular motion, activity, or function. So it's, you need to understand how fast you're doing something or how slow you're doing. So, so speed is a, is a skill that you need to be aware. Again, it also, also plays a how you move within the particular space and how fast and how slow you move in that space. Power, remember about the muscular endurance. Now power, we spoke about the link between power and speed and power and muscular strength. And that you start seeing, this is a direct example of where the health-related skills and your skill-related skills come into one to form a, a component called power. And, and so you understand the power between how you, 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 you use force to do certain things and, and, and the amount of force you apply it shows how much power you have. And, and, and so it's an important component there as well. Reaction time and, and how you respond 
um, to the stimuli. So when somebody touches your shoulder and you're able to react when you're doing a game, uh, when you're participating in any type of activity, it's how you respond to the stimuli that you have when somebody, you hear a noise, when you hear a sound or you see something and you react. It's about how you're going to be able to co coordinate those particular things. So again, I've moved into the conversation of coordination. You've seen how I've used certain words in order to introduce another concept is, is because they are so related and the concepts interplay and they play with, with each other in definition and they make each other more um, explicit so that you understand them better. So you can see how the health related and the skill related fitness components rely on each other in order to enhance your your ability to to enjoy these activities we went through the definitions and i just want you to see them again about the agility we spoke about the skill related agility we spoke about balance we just spoke about coordination um, we've also touched on the the, the topics of speed uh, we also touched on power we spoke about reaction time as well. So these are the things that we've spoken about that you've seen and I'm hoping you're starting to understand how they relate to the type of activities that you're doing. And most importantly, it goes back to those fundamental movement skills that when we spoke about the language of physical education, when you see the physical education wheel, you remember in the middle, there was the locomotor skills, there was manipulative skills, there were non-manipulative and non-locomotor skills. And so you start to understand the kind of things that we're speaking about and how when you start understanding how this is related to each other, you're able to then realize that when we get to the topic of manipulative skills, because we already spoke about locomotor skills, you start seeing lo manipulative skills include movements that involve giving force to objects or receiving force. This is about when you throw something, you're giving force to the ball and you're throwing it. When you're catching it, you're receiving a force. So it's the things about hitting, and striking and batting. And so those are manipulative skills because you're holding an object and manipulating that object or managing that object, making it move in a particular way. So you have manipulative skills. And at most times, you are involved in manipulative skills while you are engaging in the locomotor skills. And that's when your teacher starts combining the different skill themes, but they're going to focus on one for a particular lesson and say, we're going to try and develop this particular manipulative skill. So when today we're going to do catching, it's a manipulative skill, you're developing your catching skills. But let's move over to teacher Sahil, who will show us some of the manipulative skills in action. And, and, and I hope you enjoy it with us and, and we'll see you after that. Hello everyone and welcome to our manipulative exercise session today. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun. Let's get started. The first manipulative exercise for the day guys is called throwing. And I know throwing sounds very easy, but Zintle and Masinda, our two superstars, are going to take you through the technique of throwing correctly. Okay, so Masinda is going to start on the white cone, Zintle is going to start on the white cone. And all they're going to do is, the first exercise, they're going to throw the ball underarm to each other and watch their technique. So Zintle, you can start. Yes, good catch. Nice and easy. Okay. So Zintle and Masinda, what I want you to try to do is, that's very good, but I want you, when you're throwing, I want you to aim with your left hand. So if you're throwing with your right hand, aim for your left hand, point to where you want to throw, and then we throw. Good, that's better. And you'll find out you'll be a little bit more accurate. Good, aim for the hands, yes. Good, well done. Two more. Yes, good catch, one more. Excellent, well done, everyone. Okay, so that was very basic, very easy, Masinda. <laughs> okay, so guys, now we're going to go into overarm throwing. Okay, so overarm throwing comes into play if your partner, if your friend is quite far away, and underarm throwing won't get you the distance. So overarm throwing will come into play. So Masinda, just take your cone two steps back, please. And Zintle, two steps back. You can go two big steps, one, two, yes, good. So quite similar to the underarm, the overarm is quite similar, right? Where you're still gonna aim with your left hand, all right? Uh, Masinda, I want you to demonstrate, don't throw it but I want you to show everyone the correct technique, all right? So what we do is we aim with our left hand, aim forward like you're gonna throw, and turn your wrist. 
Yes. Good. So if you look there, okay, let's see your one, Zindle. I also want you to demonstrate. Yes. Okay. Point. Turn the wrist. Yes. Elbows turned right. If you look at Masinda's position, I want your hips to be turned as well. There we go. That is a very, very good technique. Okay, so Zindle, you can leave the ball down. Masinda, let's see you throw. Aim. Yeah, well done. Okay, you Zindle. Aim. Good. Excellent. That is very good, Masinda. Last try. I want you, when you're aiming, I want you to throw. So your hips will go to the target. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Nice and easy, not too hard. Yes, that's good. Very good. With using clear hips to the target after you throw the ball. Like this. Yes, yeah, so if you look at me, Masinda, catch. Look at me, Zintle. From there. Can you see that? Okay. Good. Masinda, catch Zintle as one. Good. Yes, well done, ladies. Very good. Okay, give me a high five. Very good. So guys, I hope you learned how to throw the ball correctly. You've got the underarm technique and you've got the overarm technique. The next exercise for the day is a catching exercise. Guys, I know again it sounds very easy catching, but we are going to elaborate on the two catching techniques we have today. Masinda, do you know the one? Can you show me which one it is? Yes, well done. So guys, Masinda is showing you the pinkies together catching technique, all right? And usually when we use the pinkies together catching technique, it's when the ball is coming to us that's lower than our chest. Zintle, do you know the other one? Yes, well done. So it's a thumb together one. All right, so the thumb together one we use when the ball is coming to our chest or our heads or if we're getting a high catch. Okay, so both our superstars are going to demonstrate. Okay, Zintle, you can start just normal underarm throws. Okay, there we go. Good, Masinda. If you watch both of them, they, they're using the... It's okay, Masinda. They're using the pinkies together catching technique. Good. Masinda, uh, Zinda, throw it a bit lower. There we go. Excellent. Very good, Masinda. Good catch. Two more. One, two. Good job. Now what I want you to do is, I want you to try and do a medium height catch. Okay? Let's go. Good. Masinda, remember, if it's above your chest, which technique? There we go. Yeah, well done. Thumbs together. Masinda, aim for Zintle's chest or face so she can go thumbs together. There we go. Two more. And one more. Yeah, good catch. Stop. Well done. Now the last one, we're going to go high catches. Okay, so you don't have to throw it too high. Okay, let's go. Good. Thumbs together, remember. Good. Yes, good, Zintle. Good technique. Good, Masinda. Masinda, when you're catching it, great. I want the thumbs to be here. All right? This is called the crocodile. We don't want a crocodile. Okay? Thumbs together. It's similar to a butterfly. Okay, let's go. Two more. Yeah, one more. And great job. High five. Well done, Zintle. Well done, Masinda. Good job, everyone. The next exercise, guys, is called gathering a ball or picking a ball up while we are moving. Okay, so this, this is a, 
a very detailed technique and we need to try and master it while we can guys so Zintle, myself and Masinda are going to show you the technique so if the ball is coming to us from you all right we are going to we are going to attack the ball and then pick it up like this all right in a good position and guys if we miss the ball we've got our foot behind the ball to stop it all right so we pick it up and then we get into that throwing position that we we taught you earlier okay so let's show everybody again one more time okay so if the ball is there just stand a bit back okay and if we are attacking the ball the left leg goes to the side we're in a good athletic position and if the ball misses our foot uh, misses us or our hands hits our foot okay pick it up and then we're in a good throwing position guys okay so Zintle and Masinda are going to start on that cone. Just chuck me the ball. There we go. And I'm going to test them out and I'm going to roll a few balls to them. I want to see how they adapt and if they use the correct technique. Ready Zintle? Yep. Okay. And let's go. Attack it. Good. And into my hands. Well done. Masinda stay on the cone. Good. Let's see your technique. Attack it. Good. Throw. Well done. Okay, Masinda, remember when the ball is coming, all right, our leading foot is next to the ball. Okay, our back leg is behind the ball. Okay, we're not going to go to the ball with our foot. All right, let's try again. So that left leg is going to be next to the ball. Next to the ball. Good. And pick up. Well done. Much better. Simply, let's go one more. Yeah. Well done. Masinda, one more. Pick and aim and throw. Good job. Well done, ladies. Good job, everyone. The next exercise for the day, guys, is passing a soccer ball. All right, are you guys excited, Masinda and Zintle? Yes. Okay, great. So Masinda and Zintle are going to go onto those cones. All right, and they're going to show you the correct technique of how to stop a soccer ball and how to pass a soccer ball. Okay, Zintle, you can go to that cone, Masinda on that cone. All right, and remember, guys, when we are passing the ball, okay, we want to pass the ball with the inside of our foot. All right, that's the correct way of passing a soccer ball. And Masinda, when you're receiving the soccer ball, all right, yes, well done. We receive the ball on the inside of our foot as well. Okay, so always remember, when the ball is coming to you, we stop it once and then we pass it once. Okay, that's all we're doing. Let's go. Good, stop it once, pass it once. Well done, go back to your cone. Good, stop. Yes, well done. Masinda, more energy. It looks like you're tired. Come on. There. Good. Well done. Good, Zintle. Yeah, remember to stop it. Good. I want to see more power now in your passes. More power, more power. Good. Two more passes. Good. Masinda, when we're passing it, hold it, Zintle. When the ball is here, so if you pass the ball to me, Zintle, Masinda. Pass it again. Masinda, start on this side. Okay. Look at me. I'm stopping it there and then I'm passing. Okay. If you lean back and pass, you're not going to get power. So lean into the ball when you pass. Okay. Let's go. Stop and lean into the ball. Good. That's better. One more. Good. Shift it and then pass. Good. Now let's move the cones two steps back two good and now guys this will be a bit more trickier because there's more distance and guys we can actually use our front arm to aim all right similar to throwing if you want to if i want to kick it to Masina, i'm going to aim and kick to her all right good good stop good 
aim, good. I see no more energy, so I want you to lean into it for power. Two more. <laughs> let's, let's stop it properly and kick. Yeah. Well done. One more, Zintle. Good one. Well done. Good job, everyone. Well done, Masinda. Good job. High five. Well done. The next exercise, guys, is called dribbling with a soccer ball. This is going to be very fun. Zintle and uh, Masinda are going to go through how to dribble with a soccer ball and some good close control skills. Okay, so Masinda, you're going to start on that white cone. Zintle, you're going to start on the orange cone. And all we're doing here, uh, Masinda and Zintle, is we are going to go with the soccer ball to the opposite cone. We're going to go around the cone and get back to this cone. Okay, the one key tip here, Masinda, and Zintle is that we need to keep the ball close to our feet when we are dribbling with the ball. Okay, close control is very important. Okay, ready? And let's go. Keep it close to our feet. Well done, Masinda. Go around. Good. We don't have to rush it. Wow, that was excellent, guys. Hey, eh? Very good. Let's try and go one more time and just focus on keeping that ball close to our feet. Okay, let's go. Keep it close, good. When we get to the cone, turn. Well done. Wow, well done, ladies. Very, very good. Masinda, very good. Okay, now I'm going to add a few tricks to this draw. Okay, I'm gonna add two cones on each side. Okay, and what we have to do here is we have to weave through the cones. Masinda, that's fine, leave it. We have to weave through the cones and this is going to try and improve our close control as well. Ready? Start on the cone, Masinda. Sintla, are you ready? Yep. Okay, let's see that close control. Let's go. Okay, go around and this way. Then weave through. Good, around this cone. Well done. Let's, let's try to use our feet, Masinda. <laughs> okay, good, well done, good Zintle. Okay guys, it's going to be a bit tougher, all right? But it's not a rush. Even if you do it at a medium pace, it's okay. Okay, let's go one more time. Okay, let's go. Good, close control, close control around Masinda. Good, good Zintle, move those feet faster. Good. Well done, everyone. Good job, Zintle. Very well done, well done, Masinda. The last exercise, guys, is called just hitting the tennis ball between a friend or a family member. Okay, so we're going to show you the correct technique of how to hit to a tennis ball. Come, okay, so Zintle, you're going to be onto that cone. Masinda, you're going to go there. And all we're doing is we're going to aim for our partner. All right, nice and slow, one, one touch each. One, two, good try here. Soft, just aim, aim for your partner's racket. And remember, just hold on. The technique with the tennis racket, Masinda, I want you to, so if you look at my wrist, right, I'm locking that wrist. So if the ball hits here, it's gonna be a solid hit. If my wrist is not locked, there's no, no power. So lock that wrist there, okay. Lock it, let's see, let's see it locked. Yeah, like that, good. Okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Let's go again. Good, softly. Good, soft. Yeah, again. <laughs> Last four. Okay, use it with your hand and hit it softly. Good, good. 
Oh, yeah, good nice. try. Okay, but that's good. And, and remember, try and keep it low. All right, don't try and hit it too high. Just keep it low and straight to your partner's, to your partner's racket. Oh, well saved. That's okay. Okay, guys, come. Let's go. I want to. I want to see some energy. It's like we. There's no energy. Come on, nice and softly. Yeah, good. One more. One more. <laughs> good. Keep going. Good. Okay. Stop. Excellent. I'm gonna make it a little bit tougher. I want you to take two steps back with the cone. Big steps. Uh, medium. Medium steps back. All right. Okay, we only have two balls here, <laughs> so let's try and try and make use of it. Okay, same principle. Okay, stay on that cone. Just aim for your partner's racket, lock the wrists. Okay, and hit the ball softly. Okay, the harder hands we have, the more the ball is going to just shoot off everywhere. Soft hands. Okay, let's go. It's okay, Masinda. Let's go. Try and find the middle of the racket. Yeah, it, it can bounce, it's okay. It doesn't have to be without a bounce. There. Good, Masinda, lock the wrist. The wrist is weak. Yeah, there we go. Good. <laughs> well done. Okay, guys, so that was very good. Uh, there's still a lot of work to do. I can see that. But keep trying it uh, out at home or at school. Remember, lock that wrist. All right, try and hit the ball softly and aim for your partner's racket. Thanks everyone for joining us today in our manipulative exercise session. I'm sure you had fun. And guys, before I go, please don't forget the challenge for today is for you to let us know which is your favorite manipulative skill. Is it kicking a soccer ball or any other ball? Is it throwing or is it catching? Thanks everyone, I'll see you soon. Back to you, Norman. Thank you, Teacher Sahil. Thank you, kids. I hope you enjoyed practicing your manipulative skills and that you're going to continue doing these on your own with your friends or in school and starting understanding what those activities are classified as. So now you know the box that you put those skills in the, under manipulative skills. We ask that you ask your parents to please send us a video of you doing today's challenge and look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.